buying a second home here in the mountains? Is it better to buy in Breckenridge over Keystone or Copper? Or should you choose Frisco over Dillon or Silverthorne? What's the best town for you? Christy Cotton, helping you live where you love to play. You know, each of our mountain towns are really special and have their own unique personality. So in today's video, I'm gonna tell you the real pros and cons of buying a second home in Breckenridge. Breckenridge is a little mountain town with a big personality. Most people have never even heard of Summit County or Frisco or Dillon, but the minute you mention Breckenridge, the first thing that comes to people's mind is epic skiing, iconic Rocky Mountain beauty, and a mountain lifestyle of year-round outdoor adventure that so many people dream of living. So here's the real truth, the good and bad about having a second home here in Breckenridge. Pro number one, Breckenridge is the largest ski resort in Summit County. So if you want to be in the heart of it all, then Breck is it. Boasting five peaks, 2,908 skiable acres, 187 trails, four terrain parks, the tallest chairlift in North America, Breck offers world-class skiing and riding for all abilities and levels and gets more snow than any other resort in Summit County, roughly averaging 300 inches Per season. It ranks number 13 on the Condé Nast Traveler Top 40 Ski Resorts in the U.S. Having a second home in Breck, you're up close and center to all the action with a vibrant Opre ski scene, this idyllic mountain town with its historical main street that has more than 200 shops and almost 100 restaurants and bars. Plus, Breckenridge is one of the largest historical districts in Colorado with more than 200 structures on the National Register of Historic Places. Con number one, Breckenridge is crowded. Because Breckenridge is one of the most visited ski destinations in North America, it draws visitors from all over the world, making it a major tourism destination and therefore leading to much more crowds in town, on the slopes, waiting to get on the slopes, and on the road. With just one highway in and out of Breckenridge, the weekends and holidays, particularly before the lifts open and right after they close, traffic can slow down to a crawl. Parking can also be a challenge. During peak winter season and holidays, you'll definitely want to plan and call ahead for dinner reservations. You'll also want to try to avoid the slopes and the downtown area as well as the grocery store on Saturdays, if at all possible. But even with the crowds, the advantage of owning a second home here is that you can take advantage of every season and if you're able to stay for long periods of time, you can plan around the crowds. Pro number two, short-term rental income. A common question I get from buyers that want to buy a second home and use it as a short-term rental is what town will generate the most income for a short-term rental? So when talking with several property managers, they all tell me that Breckenridge is the area that has the highest income for short-term rentals, followed by Keystone. In our resort market, vacation homes and condos are really best thought of as a lifestyle purchase, and the rental income should really be thought of something just to offset your expenses. But if maximizing rental income is important to you, then I'd put Breck at the top of your search list. The dilemma, however, comes with the new short-term rental caps that are now in place in Breckenridge, where Keystone doesn't have any. So that leads me to con number two, short-term rental regulations. If you wanna buy a second home and use it as a short-term rental, like an Airbnb, your options currently are more limited in Breckenridge than they are in some of the other towns. The town of Breckenridge recently put a cap in place on how many short-term rental licenses they'll issue. Licenses don't transfer with the sale of a property. So currently the number of licenses exceed the cap limits in many of the areas in Breckenridge. So in several areas in Breck, you can't just apply for a short-term rental license and start renting out your home. The town has created a map with four zones and each zone has a cap. Two of the zones exceed the cap and there's a very long wait list. Not all, but the majority of single family homes are located within the zone where the licenses exceed the cap and the wait list is super long. Now, if you're looking for a condo or a townhome, there's more options. You can purchase a condo in the resort zone. 
This zone has no restrictions on short-term licenses. These are condo developments with a designated front desk, such as Beaver Run Resort or Main Street Station or One Ski Hill Place. The other option is to buy a property in zone one where the short-term rental licenses have not yet exceeded the cap. There's still licenses available as of the filming of this video. If you want a list of properties in either zone one or the resort zone, just give me a call or send me an email and I'm happy to send you one. Pro number three, great views. If your ideal second home has expansive mountain views at the top of your wish list, then having a home or condo in Breckenridge is a top consideration. Many of the homes, especially on the east side of town, feature incredible views of the 10 mile range and the Breckenridge Ski Resort. The higher up you go on Boreas Pass Road and Baldy Road, the bigger the views get. But even lower and closer to town, you can find homes with incredible sweeping views of the ski resort. Con number three, parking. There is no free parking, or if there is, it's very limited. Unlike the other nearby towns, if you head down to Main Street to do some shopping or meet friends for happy hour or dinner, you'll have to pay to park. All of the parking on Main Street and the nearby side streets is limited and you'll have to pay unless it's after 8 p.m. So unless you're going out for a late dinner, you'll need to pay to park. There's a few places where you can get free parking. One is the ice rink on the south side of town. The others and closest to the heart of Main Street would be the East Sawmill lot, which is close to the gondola and free after 5 p.m and the F lot, which is free after 3 p.m. in the summer and after 5 p.m. in the winter. On the flip side, there is the Breckenridge Free Ride, which offers free public transportation within the town limits. You can park in the free airport parking lot and take the bus all over town up to the ski resorts for free parking and avoid any parking hassles. This is such a great system for the community and it connects all of the areas in Breck for free. Pro number four, ski in, ski out options. If you're looking for a second home with convenient access to the slopes, Breck has some great ski in, ski out options. You'll find slope side condos at peaks seven and eight where you'll have direct access to the ski lifts just steps from your door. Having a condo at either of these base areas comes with the benefit of access to ski school and rental shops, restaurants, bars, and of course, Opry Ski. The four o'clock neighborhood along four o'clock road has a lot of ski and ski out options. It's named after the four o'clock run, which is one of the longest runs in Breckenridge spanning three and a half miles and goes all the way into town. So you're able to ride or ski back home to your condo at four o'clock when the lifts close. This ingenious layout results in condos, townhomes, and single family homes that are exclusively ski in, ski out, or a combination of both. These homes not only provide direct slope access, but many of them offer the luxury of walking into town. There's also the base of Peak 9, which is full of activity. It has condos like Beaver Run Resort that provide direct ski in, ski out access to the Beaver Run Super Chair. The village at Breckenridge, also located at the base of Peak 9, offers luxury condominiums ranging from studios to four bedroom condos with easy ski in, ski out access to the slopes and to historic Main Street. Con number four, transfer tax. If you purchase a property within the town of Breckenridge, there's a real estate tax known as a transfer tax. A real estate transfer tax is a one-time payment that's made when you close on a property. In Summit County, these funds play a vital role in supporting various community enhancements ranging from infrastructure improvements like sidewalks and roads to facilitation of special events. The amount of real estate transfer tax in Summit County varies according to the location of the property purchased and ranges between 0% to 2% of the total purchase price. The transfer tax for the town of Breckenridge is 1%, except for some newer developments near peak eight that are 2%. Transfer tax is typically paid by the buyer, although it is negotiable, more than likely the sellers paid the transfer tax when they bought the property. So for comparison, Frisco also has a 1% transfer tax. Towns of Dillon and Silverthorne are zero. So when you're buying a property here in Summit County, make sure you ask about the transfer tax, and if there is one, how much it is. 
Pro number five, long-term appreciation potential. Breckenridge is a resort destination market and there's a high demand to live here and own your own piece of mountain paradise. So owning the second home here has the benefit of being in a high demand area with limited supply, which allows for your home to appreciate quicker in value than non-tourist areas. In Summit County, we've seen an average annual appreciation of about 7% over the past three decades and even higher during the pandemic and post-COVID times. Here in Breckenridge, 1031 exchanges are a popular strategy among savvy sellers and buyers. This allows you to defer taxes on your capital gains. So if you're selling a property elsewhere, you can seamlessly roll those funds into a purchase here in Breckenridge, or even when you decide to sell your home in Summit County, it's a strategic move that many find beneficial in optimizing their real estate investments. Taking care of your property and managing it well could lead to substantial value growth, potentially serving as a lucrative income source or a valuable asset for generations to come. There's a trend that many homeowners in Breckenridge follow. Purchase a vacation home, enjoy it for a few years, and then capitalize on the gained appreciation when selling it. It's important to remember that like all investments, Real estate prices can rise and fall, and there's a lot of variables that can affect a resort real estate market. No one can guarantee that your second home will appreciate or at any particular rate. All we can do is go by the historic figures that we've learned from the past. Con number five, financing. If you're buying a condo as a second home or as an investment property and you need financing, you need to know that some condo complexes may not be able to get financing. I'm talking about condo tells. A condo tell is a hotel-like property and has a front desk check-in, a central telephone service, daily cleaning service, and operates like a hotel. Many of the condos within the condo tell complexes are used as short-term rentals. These would be the ones in the resort zone, in Breckenridge, for example, One Ski Hill Place, Beaver Run Resort, Main Street Station. Another feature which can deem a condo as a condo tell is commercial space. If there are stores, rental companies, restaurants, etc., in the building, this can stamp a complex as a condo tell. The problem here is that many lenders can't finance these properties. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac don't like to lend on condo tells. It may take a private investor offering a portfolio product, which may cost the buyer more money. This is where using a local lender is extremely important and I can't stress that enough. Local lenders are familiar with the nuances of our resort mountain market and they'll know which condos can and cannot get financing. Now that you know the pros and cons of buying a second home in Breckenridge, what do you think? Is Breckenridge right for you? Let me know in the comments section below if Breck is where you want your second home to be. And if you're still trying to figure it out, check out my video on the pros and cons of living in Frisco, the super cute town on Lake Dillon, just minutes from Breckenridge. If you wanna know more about buying a second home here in the mountains, just give me a call or send me an email. I'd love to connect with you. Thanks so much for watching today and I'll see you again in my next video.